Hey, welcome to Mike's World. Please uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't, like this video, and leave your comment. I want to hear what you have to say. Today, we're talking about the Blackmagic A10 Mini. It's nothing new. It's been out for a while, and this is not a review on this device. And instead, what I'm going to talk about today is a major issue with this unit if you have bought this or you want to use this for live streaming. Now, I'm only going to talk about the Mini. I know there is a Mini Pro and a Mini ISO. I have not had those to use to see if there is this issue. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple other little issues, but really the major issue today with the A10 Mini is something called audio drift. It's what I call it. And basically, if you think about it, if you think about video and audio on top uh, one another synced up, and then as you go, the video just kind of gets ahead of the audio to the point where you have your audio and video unsynced and you have an issue with audio lagging behind. Um, and it's a serious issue with the Mini, uh, particularly when you're using the um, webcam out port. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. The webcam out right here, uh, this is the issue. It is not an issue with HDMI out. So that is one of the things we're going to talk about here with the Mini. Now let's talk about why I use the Mini, why did I buy it, what was I using it for, and how did I figure out the problem with the Mini, and what are some solutions. So. I had been live streaming high school football, uh, single manned camera and two unmanned cameras, and I had been using little US HDMI to USB adapters like a Camlink 4K to put three cameras into my laptop and stream through OBS Studio. That was okay, except when you put three cameras in, I was usually having an issue with one of the cameras either starting to glitch or completely dropping out. And what I really wanted was something uh, inexpensive and cheap to switch between cameras instead of having to switch in OBS. And when I went searching, you know, in pr prior to this, when I'd always looked for switchers, you know, I think the cheapest ones was around $3,000. And for what I was doing, I didn't want to pay a whole lot. So uh, I did another search, and, and that's when I noticed the Mini. And I saw it on B&H, and I was like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. But before I bought it, I actually did a lot of research. I went to YouTube and I watched a whole bunch of people who had done reviews on this product, really did my due diligence, and everything I had saw from these reviews told me, this is what I need, let's go buy it. Um, so I did, and, and disclosure, everything that I review in here, I've paid for, like nothing is given to me to review. So same way with the Mini, I went and bought this. So I bought it and it shows up uh, before the fourth game, so I went, went ahead and hooked it up and I used it. Now. I've been, as I'm switching, I'm also doing play-by-play -play with, a, with a Sennheiser headset uh, or Audio-Technica headset. And in the first game, I had used the Mini to switch cameras um, and also use the uh, crowd noise uh, microphone. I had a shotgun microphone mounted outside, you can see right here, and then a 100-foot XLR cable running into the press box and into my Sony NX5U camera and then the camera was HDMI into the uh, into the A10 Mini and then the Mini was going into my computer and going through OBS where I added graphics and the output to YouTube. Um, and what I noticed was now my headset at the time I wasn't running through the A10 Mini because I'd heard that it's unsynced if you're on camera going through uh, if you plug it directly into the imports. So I decided I was gonna bypass that, and what I actually had, and this is one of the workarounds, is I have this, which is an iRig, iRig Pre, so you can see it right here, it provides um, phantom 48 volt power, um, you have XLR input into one side, a 3.5 to the other, and so what I was doing was I, I would plug my headset into this, and I was plugging the other end into the headphone microphone dual input on my new laptop. And then I would, in OBS, it would recognize this as an audio device and the, and the headset was going into this. So what happened was, is in that first game I used the Mini, the audio from me talking and broadcasting was fine. But over time, over the three hour game, uh, when I went back and watched uh, the record or the stream, what I noticed was, that the crowd microphone was way off. And by the end of the game, it was extremely off. So they'd run a touchdown play and I'd be calling it and everything. And then, you know, 45, 50 seconds up to a minute later, you'd hear the crowd respond, yeah. And it was like, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? So, uh, 
And I thought, I was like, okay, well, you know, when I was setting up OBS, maybe I went in and I accidentally set the delay and that caused the issue. And I just really didn't think nothing else about it and I just let it go. So last game of the season come, turns out to be a huge matchup, number eight in the state versus number 11 in the state. Again, I have the mini. This time there's two of us. So I'm doing play-by-play -play and I have my brother-in-law doing uh, uh, color commentary. So we had two headsets. So now I couldn't use the iRig. So now I needed to have both headsets going into the A10 mini into the back here where you have the, the inputs. And what I was doing with the inputs is I had XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapters so I could plug the headsets in. Uh, went into the software, which I'm not going to show you that here, but I went into the software, the audio software, and using the compressor and some other things, I was able to match those microphones perfectly because they weren't the same microphones. One was an expensive Audio Technica broadcast headset, 200 bucks. The other one, a uh, Commander gaming headset for 30 bucks. Um, but surprisingly, I was able to get them to match to sound the same, uh, and they worked out really well. Uh, but on to the, the biggest issue. Um, when I went back and watched the stream, again, because it doesn't show up when you're trying to monitor in real time, as I watch the stream and we start getting in, it slowly, our audio is separating from the video and they're scoring a touchdown and it's been, they're celebrating and they're walking the sideline. Then you hear us into the end zone for a touchdown. It's like, whoa, what is going on here? So I did a lot of testing, a lot of experimenting to try to figure out what the problem was because and I went ahead and I searched online because I wanted to know, are others having this problem? Because I did not want to come on here and do a video about this, about the A10 Mini, um, and put down the product or black magic if, if, if this is isolated issue. Like, is this just a problem with me? And it's not. I found other people having the same problem. And what I did know too is that when you watch these reviews, these product reviews that happen, more often than not, a lot of these people get these sent to them ahead of time and they test them for a week or two. But the truth is a lot of people are using the A10 Mini to live stream to, um, to YouTube, Facebook, do a show, but most people aren't doing more than 20 minutes. And so the problem doesn't show up as much as longer streams. And so when I'm doing a three hour football game, it's very evident of the problem. I mean, by halftime, it's very noticeable. So, and all my testing, I did all the testing I could, I looked at everything and ultimately um, I tried streaming to different platforms at doing long run tests and audio tests and it didn't matter if it was the ATEM Mini directly into the laptop going direct to YouTube or Facebook or somewhere or if it was going through OBS, the problem was the same and it was always a problem with the webcam out right here, webcam out on the ATEM Mini. And so what I found out was is that um, Essentially what is happening is I don't know the exact frame rate, but what it feels like is happening is that video, because the settings for the A10 Mini are set at 2997p. Okay, so 2997 is drop frame. But the audio seems like it's full 30 frames. So you're getting the drop frame in video, but not drop frame in audio, and over time they're separating. Um, and that seems to be the problem. Ironically, you do not have the problem with the HDMI out, the program out. Um, if you use program out, you don't have the problem. And so a workaround here is you can do HDMI out to a capture card like an Elgato 4K or um, Camlink 4K. Um, if you do HDMI to Camlink 4K, Camlink 4K into your laptop and you go through OBS, no problem. Everything works fine. Um, the, the problem with that is one, the Elgato cam link, at least the one I bought when I bought it was 200 bucks. And now, uh, they're down to about 129, but you're taking a, a $300 a 10 mini and now you've got to add another $129, you know, just to get it to work. If you want to live stream and not have an audio issue. Um, the other, it, other thing you could do is you could ha completely avoid the a 10 mini for your audio and go through an audio mixer and then send the mixer into like this iRig into your laptop and bypass this all together and the problem's fixed. So there's your two solutions. Why is that a problem? Well, first of all, uh, to get this to work, you pretty much have to spend more money. So now um, this inexpensive $300 switcher 
it becomes like an HDMI switcher really, which you can buy an HDMI switcher for 30 bucks because if you can't use audio or any of the other features on here, then there's no point paying $300 for this. Um, I feel like this is probably a software issue that could be fixed with a firmware upgrade. I have contacted Blackmagic and I did hear back and they wanted me to do a whole bunch of tests with other platforms, which I did. I responded to them and never got a response back. Hopefully they will at some point release a firmware update to fix the problem with the Mini so that we can actually use it. Because right now this thing's nothing but a paperweight. I mean, I just can't, I just can't really use it. Um, so um, now interestingly though is with the on off with the, the buttons, if you turn the audio off and then on again, it starts synced and then slowly gets off balance. So if you wanted to turn your audio on and off constantly to keep it synced, I mean, I guess you could do that if you wanted to. To me, that doesn't seem very practical. Um, so that's the thing. So again, you can pay money for a Camlink 4K or you can pay money for um, an audio mixer and completely bypass uh, the switcher altogether as far as audio. That's your choice. So here's the issue with uh, using the HDMI out into something like a Camlink 4K and streaming uh, and why I don't like doing that. The A10 Mini does not have multi-view out. Um, what it does have is with the HDMI out, which I've shown you before, this one right here, that can be programmed to either be, to either be a program out or it can be a preview. Now it's not multi-view, it's preview. So as you hit your button to make it green, um, you can have a monitor hooked up to this and you can see what's coming up before you switch to it. That's how I would use it and then I use the webcam out to go to the laptop to stream. Um, but if you are using the HDMI out to stream, now you have no way to preview. So then I have to change this, uh, change the switcher to uh, cut bus instead of preview. And then at that point, it's like, you, you kind of got to know what your camera shot's going to be or what it is, or you're going to have to get a bunch of HDMI splitters and set up monitors coming directly out of the source for each camera. Um, which now you're talking about more money, monitors, things like that. It's just not practical. So I could, if this had a multi-view out, I could get away. Um, I, could, I could be okay with using the HDMI program out to stream. Wouldn't be an issue. As far as this goes right now, it's not working. Um, so that's my issue with the A10 Mini. Uh, here is a sample from that last game I streamed. It's later on uh, in the second half. Just watch, watch the play, and then listen to the audio, and look how much of a delay there is um, when I was using the A10 Mini with all the audio going through the A10 Mini. Check it out. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. They're just going to give it to Friday. They're going to, they're going to let him ride it right in the end zone. And the give again. And this time, right, Angela Irvin holds it. He breaks loose Got up it. the side, right side, touchdown, Midwest City. So D'Angelo Irvin fakes to Friday. That's where they were expecting it to go. So there you go. That's, that's my issue to me. Honestly, my suggestion is I would not buy this unit. I would not buy a Blackmagic A10 Mini until the problem is fixed. Um, it's So far, it's not been fixed. And... If it does get fixed, I'll do another video updating you and letting you know. But um, and and I don't I hate to slam Black Magic because every product that they've ever made that I've used has worked fine. This is the first one that I've found a major flaw with that renders the unit nearly unusable. So the other quick issue I'll mention with this that's not uh, it's just little things. But up here you have um, let's put it up here uh, if you can see it right here. This is where your key buttons are. So two things with that one. You can't program your downstream key into this. This is only your upstream key, and it only works with chroma key. It doesn't work with luma key. If you set, if you go into the software setting and set it for luma key, and then you turn this on, this just blinks because it won't recognize the luma key. It's only for chroma key. That's a that's a major flaw in my opinion. And the fact that you can't you program these buttons for your downstream key, because your downstream key is where you're going to put your bug that goes down in the side, and you want to be able to turn that on and off. And when I bought this, like I, I want to be able to do everything on the hardware. Like I really don't want to have to have my laptops running all my graphics and everything. And I don't want to have another laptop to run uh, 
the software that comes with the A10 Mini and being clicking and switching. I want it here. That's why I bought this. Um, but right now you can't do that. So to me, that's an issue. I think they need a firmware update to switch that to be able to use these two these on off buttons for the downstream key. That's all I have for this video. Um, I hope uh, this has helped any of you make your decisions. I hope Black Magic sees this and they fix this soon. And uh, stay tuned. I'll have another video coming up eventually um, with my whole football live stream setup, including the A10 Mini, to show you how I had it set up. Cheap alternative for high schools, things like that, to be able to do a live stream for high school football. Thank you. Again, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please like this video and always leave your comment. I will answer as many as I can. And until next time, thank you for watching. Take care.